today on the spot. We get our weekly Xbox Live update on demo Mod Nation Racers and talk to Gus Johnson, the new voice of Madden NFL 11. Today on the spot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a little show we like to call around here today on the spot. I'm your host, Sean McInnes. This gentleman over here at my side is probably Chris Waters, but I haven't 100% determined that to be a fact yet. Chris, Scientists are mostly sure. Scientists are 99% sure, but there are some. How sure can you be about anything in this life? Not 100%, apparently. Philosophy. Chris, we've got a great show lined up. We've got yeah. a demo for Mod Nation Racers. Count it. We've got an interview with Gus Johnson. Number two. About Madden 11. And you know what else we have? What is that? A segment I like to call Twox Bowl this week on Xbox Live. Okay, thank you. Whole lot of action going on. But first, as usual, we're going to kick it off with the latest headlines courtesy of the news team. Take it away, guys. Hey everybody, it's the GameSpot News Update for Saturday, May 22nd. I'm Brendan Sinclair, substituting for Tor Thorson, who's in the backwoods of Louisiana hunting the most dangerous game of all. Man. Fable 3 is back in the headlines this week, as the Xbox 360 exclusive is no longer all that exclusive. Microsoft confirmed Lionhead Studios' upcoming action RPG will also be available for the PC by the end of the year. But before Xbox 360 loyalists get too distraught over having to share, Microsoft said that the console will still be the only place to get the limited edition version of Fable 3. The $80 premium version comes in a package designed to look like one of the game's books and includes a deck of playing cards and a coin to flip when the game's moral decisions are too gut-wrenching to make yourself. Additionally, the premium edition includes extra in-game content, including a new outfit, location, quest, and breed of dog. If you thought that was an expensive way to show your devotion to a game, Wait until you hear what Capcom has in the works for Super Street Fighter 4. The publisher has given Roundtable Concepts the right to make a line of HD TVs bearing the Street Fighter name. Spendthrift gamers will soon be able to purchase Street Fighter 4 LED TVs up to 46 inches large. The sets will feature the game's characters or logo on the casing, and a splash screen of Super Street Fighter 4 art will appear for 8 seconds every time the TV is turned on. Pricing on the TV was not revealed, but Roundtable has offered similar sets with Marvel Comics characters on them starting at $300 for a 32-inch model. Earlier this year, Roundtable also offered a buy one get one free promotion on its line of 55-inch HDTVs branded with logos from Florida universities. Because if you're nuts enough to buy expensive audio-visual equipment because it has a startup screen featuring something you like, you're probably nuts enough to buy it in bulk. That's your GameSpot news update for Saturday, May 22nd. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. Thanks for the update, Brendan. Up next, it's Twoxable, as Sean likes to say, but we're not here to discuss his weird proclivity for pronouncing acronyms in full. We're here to talk about this week on Xbox Live. This week on Xbox Live. In the game demo section, tee up at Celtic Manor in the Ryder Cup Challenge in Tiger Woods PGA Tour 11. This year's edition of EA Sports' famed golf franchise allows players to create their own team and take on others in 12v12 online team play. The all-new True Aim mode puts you in the shoes of a real-life pro. The Games On Demand section has a couple offerings this week. For $29.99, players can download Star Wars The Force Unleashed. In it, you take on the role of Darth Vader's secret apprentice in a new chapter of the saga set during the era between Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith and Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. If intergalactic battles between the forces of good and evil is too much for you to handle, and tennis is more what you're looking for, then Top Spin 3 is available this week for $19.99. Step onto the court with 20 top pro players with World Tour Mode via Xbox Live. There's two titles coming to Arcade this week. For 1,200 Microsoft points, Metal Slug XX joins you and the familiar four warriors, Marco, Tarma, Eerie, and Fio, backed with Ralph and Clark from the King of Fighters franchise. Along with the seven multipath stages, this 2D shooter includes elements such as Combat School, which contains more than 70 missions. In Aqua, players will follow the story of Captain Benjamin Gray and fellow engineer Polly Edison as they struggle to save the Aqua world from a conspiracy and a massive conflict between two rival naval empires. Finally, in add-ons, Dragon Age Origins releases the Darkspawn Chronicles. For 400 Microsoft points, you'll play as the Darkspawn. As a Herlock Vanguard, you alone hold the power to make thralls of fellow Darkspawn and drive them into the heart of battle. This DLC includes a standalone adventure where you command Genlocks, 
Turlocks, Shrieks, and Ogres. For those who solve their problems with money, the full vehicle unlock allows split-second players to acquire every vehicle in the game for 320 Microsoft points. If the cars aren't enough, then for 560 Microsoft points you can get the Master Unlock which gives players access to all vehicles, game modes, and tracks. That's all the time we have. Those are your updates this week on Xbox Live. So that's what's going on with Microsoft's console this week, but as you know, Chris, we are a fair and balanced video game news show, so Indeed. it is time to show Sony a little bit of love with a demo for Mod Nation Racers on the PSP. That's right, we got Kevin Van Ord in the studio with Mod Nation Racers on the PSP. I'm excited to see if he gets creative in there. I mean, that's what that game's all about, right? It's Get creative on the tracks, the characters, and Kevin Van Ord is a creative man. That is indeed true. Kevin Van Ord is perhaps the most creative man that I know. Arguable. Kevin, take it away. Hi everybody, it's Kevin Van Ord again. Now I am here with Vernon Mollett with Sony to take a look at Mod Nation Racers for the PlayStation Portable. Vernon, what are we going to see with this version today? Well, basically we're going to have a look at all of the features that uh, are available on the PSP. And what we really tried to do is match the PS3 uh, pretty much one for one as far as feature set. So uh, yeah, we had some people that told us we were kind of crazy to try to pack all that in onto a portable. But uh, yeah, we're going to have a look at it and see what you think. Well, let's take a look at the screen. You, um, you know, we, uh, we're going to see some uh, pre-recorded footage here of, um, of uh, PSP uh, Mod Nation Racers in action. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do we see right now? Uh, we just wanted to show you a, a bit of the variety of characters that uh, you can create, uh, some of the carts that you can create, and then we go into uh, you know, a bit of the track studio as well. Um, so we wanted to give you all of that functionality that you get on the home console, only you get to take it with you. So yeah, you can see that uh, you know, we give you the, the vast variety of creative tools. You know, we, uh, at Mod Nation as a, as a brand, we really focused on the creativity, you know, and then taking that, your created characters, your cards, and tracks, and then bundling that all up and giving you the ability to race with and race on your creations. So Vernon, tell us about some of the creation aspects that we'll see in Mod Nation Racers for the PSP. Uh, sure, um, you know, we have the full suite of uh, creative tools as, as far as the mods, the carts, and the track. Um, so, you know, you can create your characters, create your carts, and then once you create your track, you can send them all out uh, into the community where they can be voted on, uh, they can be remixed just like in the PS3. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty full suite of, of creativity. Now multiplayer is of course an important part of a kart racer. Mm -hmm. uh, what can we expect to see? I know on the PlayStation 3 we've got not only split screen and split screen plus online as well as just online, but uh, what can we see on the, on the PSP in terms of online features? Right, as far as the, you know, the community itself is a really important aspect, you know, the creativity side, yes, but you know, at the heart, it's a racing game. And so we really wanted to focus on uh, the racing just as much as the creativity side. So we're allowing uh, six players online and six players ad hoc so that you can get in, mix it up, and uh, yeah, and have a good time. So Vernon, we know that there are certain things, of course, on the, on the PS3 that aren't gonna translate to the PSP. For example, you've got 12 players um, on, uh, on online races on the PS3 as opposed to, to six on the, on the uh -huh. PSP, but the PSP version also does some things that the PS3 version does not. Can you tell us about some of those things? Uh, sure, yeah, uh, you know, we wanted to have some exclusive offering as well for the PSP. And, uh, you know, there's, there's several, several examples. Um, you know, the first of which is like a stomp mechanism. So it's basically a weapon when you don't have a weapon. So, you know, you cruise along and it does take your boost meter. And um, basically it's a radial weapon that affects those around you or you can direct stomp and, and it completely explode the cart, you know, for that kind of advantage. Um, we also have last cart standing mode, which is, um, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's basically a big tug of war. So you do your first lap and then uh, the, a universal timer goes off and during the last 10 seconds of that timer, the person in last place gets unlimited boost, you know, so you can try to get out of last place. And then should you get into, you know, fifth place, for example, then the remainder transfers to the now last place person. So it's this, you know, constant battle to get out before we explode you. So Vernon, you must be really excited. The game is almost here. It's out on Tuesday. 
Yeah, we are really excited. I mean, what we're, I mean, we're ecstatic to see what comes out, you know, when the game gets out in the wild and, you know, these awesome tools get in the hands of the public. And, um, and actually, I brought you a couple copies here. So, well, that is very exciting. <laughs> Take a look. It's Mod Nation Racers for the PSP coming out on Tuesday. Um, Vernon, thanks so much for coming by. Thanks for bringing this excellent looking game over to show us. And uh, until next time, this is Kevin Van Ord, and I'm throwing it back to the <laughs> studio. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that demo of Mod Nation Racers for the PSP because, well, that's not all the Mod Nation action we've got coming your way. We also have a demo for the other Mod Nation Racers, the PlayStation 3 version, set for the show next week, right, Chris? That's coming up next week, but now we're moving on to the interview section of our show today. Our interviewee, Gus Johnson, recently selected to be the new voice of the Madden franchise. And welcome to Quest Field here in the Emerald City, Seattle. Gus Johnson, along with, with the, the War Eagle, Brian Eckberg. And Brian, as the 49ers get ready to take on the Seahawks, how do you break this game down? I break it down by helmet. You have a, a bird on one helmet and you have a number on the other helmet. Numbers always beat birds. Ah, very interesting concept. Hey guys, Brian Eckberg here at EA Redwood Shores. We're talking Madden NFL 11 with Gus Johnson, a familiar face to, uh, familiar voice to sports fans, has called all sorts of different sports, and is now called, I think, three different EA sports games. But tell us how you got involved with Madden NFL 11. Uh, well, you know, uh, I had a chance to be a part of uh, the NCAA uh, game last year, uh, NCAA 2010, and uh, it was a wonderful experience going up to Vancouver, Canada, and uh, voicing it over. Uh, there were two different parts of it. There was a CBS part and there was also a, uh, a ESPN part. So I had a chance to work with Bill Raftery, uh, coach, and we went up there and did it and had a lot of fun. And, and I think that uh, hopefully I did a pretty good job. And uh, they uh, were thinking about going in a different direction with Madden. And, uh, you know, they had a list of people that they were interested in. And, and fortunately, I lucked up and, uh, you know, I got the call. Quest Field in the Emerald City, Seattle, Washington. And we've got a great game set for you today as the Seattle Seahawks take on the San Francisco 49ers in a division game. Gus Johnson along with Ronnie Morales, and we're ready for football here at Quest Field. You know, the guys with NCAA 2010 were just wonderful people, and that was a great learning experience for me. Uh, but what uh, I'm realizing, and you know, you got to kind of be an actor when you're doing a video game. This is because there's nothing happening in front of you. You're sitting in front of a, a microphone in the studio. And I think what I learned was I had to kind of take it to another level in terms of uh, from an emotional standpoint and uh, make sure that I tried to bring another kind of energy uh, to every line w that we had to, to say. And, uh, you know, we're saying probably for me personally, probably 60,000 lines um, at different temperatures. Uh, so certain kind of lines, you want to make them conversational. But then when that guy is scoring the 99-yard touchdown, you got to go, you know, crazy. And this will be four set from his own five. Oh, he fumbled the football. It's loose, and it looks like the Niners have it. Gus, I'm fairly sure Seattle meant to do that. This is working perfectly into Pete, uh, Pete Carroll's game plan. No problem here, no problem at all. Hey guys, Brian Eckberg here. I'm with Ronnie Morales from EA Tibber. I'm talking about the audio of Madden NFL 11. Now, Ronnie, as I'm sure you know, uh, with Madden NFL 10, one of the criticisms was commentary. I know you guys know that. And, yeah. and it seems like you have really addressed it this year by bringing in Gus Johnson. I want to talk about Gus, but tell me, first of all, what was the, what was the aim? What, what was the overall goal for this year from an audio and commentary perspective? Well, first of all, we really wanted to make sure that we captured the emotion of what football brings to the table every day. And it's such an emotional sport, and we kind of fell flat a little bit. So we wanted to make sure we brought energy, and we brought it you know, over the top. And uh, in the same time, uh, when we wanted to add authenticity to the game um, via you know all of our different stadium sound effects and all of our uh, EA tracks and all the stuff that's new to, to audio this year but again making sure that the, the game didn't feel flat and, and that and that you know Gus Johnson is the perfect person to talk about emotion wise but you know it's just bringing that high high, high energy uh, uh, to the game I just try to block everything out and visualize in my mind because I've seen I've called hundreds of games thousands of games over my you know almost like a 20-year career and when I get in there I use my memory and I block everything out and I let my memory serve as as a guide 
for the lines that I'm saying. So if it's a, you know, I've called a 70-yard touchdown. I've called a bomb before. I've called a great hit. And if, if you could just let go, which is what I try to do in my regular career uh, with broadcasting, if you can let go, then you have a chance to really connect to a moment. We've always said it, you, you know, if it's in, if it's in, uh, if you see it on Sundays, you see it in Madden. And the same thing could be said about audio. If you, if we hear it on Sundays, we want to hear it in Madden. So we really went out of our ways to capture a couple of things. Crowd chants was a big thing for us. We wanted to make sure that you heard all those "Go Pack Goes," the Skull Vikings, uh, all those little ditties that you hear, you know, when you're at the stadium, and that, you know, you, after a couple beers, you're drinking, you, you know, you're, you're, you're shouting yourself. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that you were doing that uh, in Madden as well. Um, and then also, you know, there's specific songs that you hear, and, and these are songs that are kind of become the staple of the NFL and, and in stadium songs that you hear. You know, you got your ACDs, your, your crazy team, uh, you know, Ozzy, when you hear the crazy train and you hear the all aboard right before kickoff. And, you know, those are the things that you kind of come to expect when you're when you're not only experiencing football, but playing it. Um, so we wanted to make sure that that level of authenticity was there. And, we, and that's what we did this year with uh, with all of our tracks. Uh, Madden NFL 11 will be available on August 10th, uh, 2010. And it's going to be on uh, everything pretty much, you know, PS3, uh, Xbox 360, Wii. Uh, PS2 and PSP. Thanks, Ronnie. Yeah, no problem. Now it's time for everybody's favorite part of the show. It is a trivia giveaway prize. Now, on this episode, we've got this really nice Bethesda Softworks track jacket to give away. I should warn you, it is a size medium, so bear that in mind when you answer this question. So, this one's a little bit different from usual. This is a visual question. Take a look at the four logos on this sleeve here. You got a good look at those? All right, well, tell me, what are those four games that are referenced on this sleeve? If you think you know, either send us an email to on the spot at gamespot.com or use that little green answer trivia module on the page right here. Good luck with that trivia question, folks. And that's going to about wrap it up here, but let me tell you what we got in store for you next week. This past week was Judges Week down in LA, so we were down there, got a look at a whole bunch of cool stuff. Some of that content's going to start coming out next week. We got stuff from EA, from Namco Bandai, and a whole bunch of others, so you're going to want to keep an eye out for that. Also, it is the fourth and final installation in our epic History of Video Games feature. Be sure to catch that, and of course, if you want to sling some six shooters with the GameSpot staff, be sure to come by for Red Dead Redemption game night next Wednesday. You know, I just pretty much always want to sling six shooters with the GameSpot staff. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why you were hired on here, for your slinging abilities. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Today on the Spot. I'm your host, Sean McInnes. And this I'm here, Chris Waters. I'm, I'm going to say it myself. That's true. We have determined 100% factually like that, that is Chris Waters. So long, everybody. 99.99. Remember when they had Madden and Pat Summerall? Mm -hmm. And Pat Summerall was all. Are you thinking of Slippy? <laughs> <laughs> That's coming up next week, but right now we're moving into the interview section of the show. We got to sit down and chat with Gus Johnson, who is the new voice of the Madden franchise. Let's hear what he has to say about being selected as the uh, new Golden Pikes. <laughs> Golden Pikes!